Today, we are back in Universe Sandbox in the new terraforming update, and we're going to be doing your guys' suggestions in this update. And today we are starting with this suggestion here, add a rogue star to the solar system. So I think the best way to do this one is actually to shoot a star coming through the solar system to see how that affects the orbits of these planets. So let's do that. Okay, uh, what's a good sized star? Alpha Centauri A, that's pretty close to the sun. This is probably like average star size, maybe. So we're going to launch this and we don't actually want it to hit anything. We just want it to go through the solar system. I'm kind of going to go out of the angle. Uh, let's just launch it and see what happens. So it is on its way. You can see it here. We'll, we're will we going to have to speed up time to really see this. Oh, look, it's pulling the sun towards it, which is pulling all of the planets together. Okay, so they just flew by each other. Let's slow down time here. So the sun gets thrown down and Alpha Centauri A gets thrown up. Look how close they got. They almost collided because their gravities were pulling on each other. Uh, let's see how the planets react to this. Whoa, Alpha Centauri A captured multiple of the planets. The sun has none. Alpha Centauri A stole all the planets. Okay, wait, is Earth in here? Okay, I want to see if Earth will survive this. Um, it's been honestly like 50 years since I threw the planet or through the star and still 92% chance of life. It's going down a little bit. Alpha Centauri A stole Earth, Mars, Jupiter. I think it stole these outer planets too, but we're gonna have to wait and see. Yeah, I think so. Oh, oh, something just happened there. They pulled towards each other again. Earth got thrown out. Okay, so Earth did not survive, but you can see it's the year 2209. So if this happened today, we would be able to live our full life still, which is insane to think about. Okay, our next one's kind of a fun one. It's terraform a moon and then give that moon a moon and see how the orbits react to each other. So let's pick a moon of a planet here. Okay, I think I'm gonna pick one of Jupiter's moons. It has a lot, you can see those. Let's do, let's do Ganymede, why not? Okay, and we are in the new update, so this might be different than kind of what I'm used to. Um, I'm gonna try just adding water to start. Ganymede's the biggest moon in the solar system, so this is going to be perfect for giving a smaller moon. Oh, look, the primary thing is oxygen, so I think this is... No, it is a water ocean. Okay, but look at that. That's a perfect coverage, I think. It does have some oxygen on it. You can see that here. If we just add an atmosphere, we're going to have to actually pick the minerals. Okay, let's go one Earth's atmosphere, and then we'll, we'll lower it a little bit because it's not as big as Earth. Whoa, okay. It's all blue. Why is it all blue? I want to... Okay, is there a way to pick which materials are in the atmosphere? No. Okay. Oh, there's actually no atmosphere anymore. Here, let's... We're going to have to do this manually, I think. So we're going to set this to zero and then start adding nitrogen. Oh, maybe not that much. Because nitrogen is the main component of Earth's atmosphere. But then we also need some oxygen. Whoa. Why is it adding so much? Okay, what's our life likelihood at? Hey, it's not zero. Okay, <laughs> I don't know how to deal with these new atmospheres. It's gonna take some getting used to. We have oxygen and we have nitrogen. And we're gonna need some water. We already have water. Okay, I'm gonna manually kind of do this. Okay, I'm kind of cheating with this atmosphere. I don't know for sure how to really make these. Okay, I'm gonna set the temperature to five. What are we at? Three, I made it go lower. Okay, four. Okay, we're gonna leave it. I'm scared to touch it anymore. Um, so now we're giving Ganymede a moon. So this is a moon of a moon. We're gonna have to go random small moon. Maybe that might be too big still. Mm. Okay, we're gonna go with this one. Okay, basically we're just trying to see if this is gonna be stable. So let's turn on trails, yep. And make sure that Ganymede stays in orbit of Jupiter. Yes, okay, this actually does look stable. It's really hard, actually, to put a moon of a moon. Um, just for fun, I'm going to try to put something really, really small in orbit of this to see if that's even possible. Like a banana. No, see, it's really hard because Ganymede pulls on it, too. So Jupiter is pulling on both of these, but the, the difference in strength is big enough that Ganymede holds on to it. 
That was a cool suggestion. Terraforming is actually a lot harder, but let's go to the next one. Okay, this one's kind of cool. It says make Earth orbit the sun vertically and see if it has any effect on the temperature and the seasons. So for this one, we're actually going to delete the Earth and then put it back, but we want the orbit to be vertical like this. That's the moon though. Let's do that with the Earth. <laughs> Okay, planet Earth, and we want it to be about one AU because that's how far it is right now. So like here, that's not perfectly vertical, but that is pretty much straight vertical. And it's the same distance as it was before. So let's see how this affects the seasons. So the day night cycle, whoa, okay. So half of the year, the Northern hemisphere is completely dark and half of the year, the Southern hemisphere is dark. So you can see it actually goes around like this. So you wouldn't really have day and night. You would just have your seasons would be your day night. You would just be rotating. So like if you lived in America at this time of the year, the sun would just be going in circles in the sky and it would never set. I do think that the ice is gonna melt. Okay, so after 20 years, let's see how the earth looks. I think it's a little bit colder overall. Oh, look, it is doing what I thought it would do ice forming around the equator because that's where the least sunlight hits. It's exactly opposite because right now on Earth, the equator gets more sun than any other part of Earth and more direct sunlight too. So that is interesting to see that the ice starts forming around the equator and then the North and South Pole are actually going to be pretty warm. You can see that here. So the closer you get to the equator, the colder it is. And then it's actually very, very hot on the North and South Pole. Very interesting, actually. Wow. Okay, that's cool. That's a cool experiment. Let's go to the next suggestion. Okay, this one's gonna be fun to try. I don't know if it's gonna work, but it says make two negative mass black holes or white holes, which I've done before. And in theory, they should still be attracted. I don't know if this comment is real, like if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. So in Universe Sandbox, you can create a black hole that has negative mass and that turns it into kind of a white hole where it repels things instead of attracts them. Okay, we're just gonna do a black hole the same mass as the sun. We'll put it right here. We'll put the, a good background on for this. Okay, so if we set the mass instead of one sun to negative one sun, that will make it start repelling things. So if I put Earth next to this, you can see how small it is, but put Earth next to this, you can see it immediately just got flung away. So we're also gonna make this white. Okay, okay, so I have the white hole now. Uh, we're gonna put one right here and just put one right here. I think that they're gonna get pushed away from each other, but according to the comment, they should be attracted. Let's see. Okay, I don't even know what happened. <gasps> wait, 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 I think it might've worked. Okay, I need to do that again, but slow motion. Pause time, put one here, put one here. Each one is negative one sun mask, that's correct. Okay, we're gonna go really slow time. Let's go real time. Whoa, okay, it's. That was real time. That's how fast they were pulling, but I'm pretty sure it did. It combined it and now it's negative two suns. So there still is an attractive force. Okay, I, I gotta do it again, but super, super slow. That was real time, you saw it. Okay, so how fast? One millisecond per second? Okay, now they're being repelled? What? I am so confused actually. Wait, why does it say that they're how did it combine when it was going fast? But if I go super slow and then it just combined there, what? It like repelled and then there's a point when it just combined even though they weren't touching. I am so confused actually. I don't know if this is, maybe I'm using the preview version and this is a bug, but look, one millisecond, they'll start traveling away from each other. You can see that. And then there's a point where one of them disappears and it's just inside the other one. Yeah, okay, I think if you turn up the speed fast enough, then it does it, or not. Oh, see, it just happened. So it might be a speed thing, I'm not sure. Might be because I'm on a preview version, but technically they combined, but they were moving away. I have no idea, let's go to the next suggestion. Okay, this suggestion says, no idea if this will turn into a gas giant, but crash a planet that is 99% hydrogen into Earth. So we're gonna try to turn Earth into a gas giant by just throwing a planet made of uh, hydrogen. So let's launch an Earth at Earth, but we will edit this Earth and make it 99% hydrogen. Not 100%, 99. Okay, it doesn't even count this one as a gas giant. So let's try that though. Okay, here we go. Gas giant Earth versus regular Earth. They have the same mass, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so this Earth ate it. Uh, I don't know if that counts. We're gonna need to redo this. 
we need something smaller than Earth to crash into it. Okay, I'm gonna launch the moon, but then make the moon hydrogen. 99, okay, it's 99.5%. It's pretty much the same size as Earth. So let's see what happens this time. Okay, all the hydrogen starts falling off. Okay, it looks like a lot of hydrogen did end up on Earth because you can see that here. Uh, this is from the new update. Oh, you can see massive tsunamis flooding lots of the Earth. The atmosphere is getting cloudier. You could see that here, but it's not a gas giant. So let's do that a few more times and see if we can make this turn into a gas giant. Okay, here's round two. You can see it's a little tiny gas giant flying into Earth. Oh, okay, wait, it might've just taken two. You can see the orbit's wobbling a lot. I think that's because of all these fragments that are moving. We're gonna have to speed up time and see if this happens. Whoa, 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 wait, something happened. This didn't get fully absorbed and got launched back out. Okay, I think this game is definitely bugged because we're on the preview version. This is still interesting though. And this Earth, it this like absorbed it. I don't even know what happened. Um, I guess we'll call that a success because this this majority of the mass is in this and this is a gas giant, so. All right, and our final suggestion for today says you should make a habitable moon and a non-habitable planet and then crash the moon into the planet to see if that'll make it habitable. That's a good suggestion. So we're just gonna make a quick system. Uh, we'll just use the sun and then, okay, I'm not very good at terraforming, but we're gonna try. I think I found a cheat way to terraform if you just launch Earth into whatever you're trying to terraform. Because Earth, you know, is good for life. So, I don't know, launch a few Earths into this and see if that'll terraform it. I mean, I mean, it didn't make it worse. Ah, uh, okay, well, so we actually need to terraform this planet by launching a habitable moon into it. Okay, what's the chance of life on this? Zero, okay, so this is gonna be perfect for us to try to terraform. So if we put a moon in orbit here, we don't want a super big moon. Okay, we'll try this. So we need to terraform this moon now. But just adding an atmosphere doesn't work. You gotta manually do all this. Zero points, we'll go 70% of the atmosphere nitrogen. I think that's pretty close to what it is. And then what, maybe 5% carbon dioxide, 10% oxygen. These are just guessing numbers, honestly. And then there's some other stuff in there. And then we are going to, I don't know why the atmosphere is so blue like that. Let's add some water to it too. There we go. Okay, let's see if I can actually get a successful terraform. How does that work? 3.8, I mean, moons are hard to terraform just regularly. Rotational period, set this to one day, set the temperature to like, I don't know, 10 Celsius. How's that? 6.2, okay, we'll take it. Uh, well, this is at zero. So if this has any percent above zero after this, then I'll consider this a success. So we just wanna launch this into the planet now, right here. Okay, we're gonna launch this into this planet now and see if that can bring us any habitability at all. Cause that did have a small chance of life, 6%. Um, well, obviously it's not gonna be habitable when it's burning hot. Let's give it a few years to cool down and let's see if it's above zero. It, it is above zero, 0. 0.0003. So, I mean, I guess it kind of worked. Um, I bet you could do it better than I did. So try it in your games. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. As usual, put your suggestions down in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next video.